There's a new kid on the conference block in London later this year. It's called Rework, and it's a conference that combines R&D, technology, and urban development. We're meeting Nikita Johnson today. She's the brainchild behind it all, and she'll be telling us what we can expect. Welcome to Tech Sessions. Hello. So can you tell us what's the basic concept with Rework? What are you going to be doing? Yeah, so Rework is really all about combining science, technology and entrepreneurship. So that's what we're really trying to make different from other technology or academic um, conferences and events. And we've got a real focus on a positive impact. So we want to apply emerging technology, breakthrough innovations and ideas so that they can have a really positive impact on society and business. Well, that was going to be my, uh, my next question, is how, how are you going to differentiate yourself in the tech mm -hmm. conference space? I realise tech is a very broad industry, but we've got TEDx covering very many bases, um, Wired, Web Summit, there's a huge amount in this space already. Do we really need another technology conference? Yeah, so that's what we're trying to do is bring it so that it's really collaborative and interactive. So that it's not just a case of TED where there's sharp presentations um, throughout the whole day, but there's no real chance for collaboration between all of the attendees in the room. And that's really the key point. There's up to 300 people in a room that all have different expertise in different areas of technology or science or business. So it's trying to bring that together and see what we can do with that. So, for example, at the first Rework Summit, after each presentation, um, we're kind of going to group them into different technology areas of expertise or issues of different challenges and then have a discussion with the whole room and the whole include the audience as well about more generally about the impact of that technology so it could be somebody talking about robotics and they're working on really advanced robotics trying to make it much more intelligent and um, more personable which is interesting but it's really a case of so what what's what does that have why should I care about that if I work in healthcare so then it's trying to say okay so how can we use that technology in the cities or in education to try and really advance it and progress it forward. So you're going to try and be a little bit more practically focused. There has been a, um, a backlash, I suppose, against the being talked at conference model. Yes. So the do lectures is really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and there have been other kind of unconferences which have tried to deconstruct that a bit. Are your delegates, the people paying to come, are they going to be sitting around and building something, making something tangible that they can take away? Um, for this first event, there's not going to be building that practical things. It's more just going to be generating ideas and new areas for collaboration. We will have some workshops which are more practical, um, running in side sessions and breakout sessions. So, for example, um, Vlad Trifa, one of the co-founders of Everything, um, the Internet of Things company, he's going to be looking at practically using the Internet of Things for people in the room that may not have that level of expertise, but they want to try and incorporate it into the company. Um, and then afterwards, we're also doing a series of smaller, more informal meetups to really take some of the key points from the summit and follow them through in a more practical way. So looking at rapid prototyping um, in cities, for example, trying to look at how we can really practically use sensor technology and wearable technology and the Internet of Things in cities to try and make them much more smarter, more efficient and safer and cleaner. Cities and the technology around um, how communities of people will have to live together in the future is quite a key area. Is that something a bit less explored? Because there is a huge amount in the kind of pure technology conference space. Yeah, I think so. And I studied cities previously in my academic background, so that's something that I'm really keen to try and explore with the technology and more science side um, and if cities are going to be such a huge challenge for this century we're going to have dozen at least a dozen mega cities where there's going to be around 20 million people in that city and the challenges that will start are just trying to think how we can live much more smarter more efficiently and sustainably and I think new technology that's really advancing and not maybe not even ar arisen yet but still coming through academia um, that technology can then be applied to try and make urbanisation, which is at an unprecedented level, make it much more, um, kind of solve some of those challenges that it will start. Is there a real bottleneck, a real problem in translating ideas that are in pure R&D departments? There's some amazing work going on, it's quite hard to hear about that. <laughs> I think, I think so, yes, and that's why I purposely started um, this summit, um, I want to hold it in, at Old Street in kind of East London where the tech community is flourishing and where there's lots of new ideas 
and bring um, academics and scientists working on really emerging breakthrough technology to the same area so that we can start that discussions with entrepreneurs and with startups to try and break down some of those barriers. Um, there's so many great universities and schools around um, London and the rest of the UK as well that are, have leading scientists and um, technologists at them so it's really trying to bring that technology and try and fast track it into the business and startup community much quicker. Can we expect there to be a lot of all-male panels? No. Um, are, you having, are you having trouble finding women to speak um, at these events? Then? To begin with, I, all the first speakers that um, we released were all male, um, which was something that I then tried to really work hard to try and um, put a change to. Obviously, being a female founder, I wanted to try and make sure that there was plenty of women in the room. Um, I've been to lots of tech conferences and events where sometimes we're quite outnumbered, so I wanted to try and push for that. So there's some brilliant women speaking um, on all different types of topics, founders of companies, um, professors of great research, so we've got a great mix in the room. The social impact of the work that is discussed at Rework is quite an important element. Yeah, um, that again stems from my background working in international development um, and urbanisation. So looking at how we can provide more accessible education for all and looking at water scarcity, climate change, often all those challenges that we're really going to have to work on this century are faced um, by the poorest people in the world. So it's really trying to use all these new technologies that are coming through um, and they've got such potential and if we can try and apply them to these big challenges then there could be great opportunity for trying to tackle some of them. There's a very big gap between Old Street and you know a ghetto in South Africa. Mm -hmm. How do you really bridge the gap between talking about change and actually doing it? Yeah, again, that's why we want to try and follow up these conferences with these smaller meetups that are going to be much more informal so that you don't just attend the summit, great, we've spoken about lots of good ideas, but then we all go out into the world again and forget about it. So we're trying to, every after every event, a few weeks later, we'll be gathering people again to talk about these key issues. So it may be, um, for example, somebody talking about um, mobile applications in Africa, looking at how we can use that for education, or looking at telepresence and robotics for new education sources. Um, or it could be looking at sensors and wearable technology in healthcare, which could then have a huge impact on making healthcare more accessible in both in the UK and, and also in developing countries as well. What's particularly exciting you in the technology space? I mean, you've encapsulated some really powerful concepts there. Mm -hmm. What really excites and interests you? I think it's the speed of change because the topics that we're specifically looking at, like nanotechnology or um, wearable technology or biotech, artificial intelligence, they've all got such a fast track of exponential growth. So it's trying to capture that and really try and apply it to something positive so that we can grasp it as it's going up this accelerative pace. So that's really what I think is going to be the most interesting thing that happens. And if you could visualise, say, five years down the road when Rework has done a very successful series of conferences, how would you like to have changed the world? Um, I think making the world a more equal place would be one of the key things. So trying to make, as I've mentioned, make healthcare and education much more accessible to people. Um, and cities, I think it's just such a big problem that we're going to face. This um, level of urbanisation that we're facing, trying to really make cities a great place to live, make them much more smarter, um, more efficient, safer, cleaner, more sustainable. That's where 60% of the population are going to be living really soon. So it's trying to make sure that we're living in the most sustainable way possible because unless we do something now, it's going to get too late and we'll be past that point of trying to capture that and make it much more sustainable. Rework coming to a city near us soon. Um, Nikita, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.